turning a dollar into a one billion dollar giveaway in 30 modules one step at a time and welcome back to this week's episode mr big and i like to thank you for being back a action-packed the craziest show on youtube history today here we are episode four well we're way past number one now. and we're getting a lot closer to the 30th module which starts the beginning of this one billion dollar giveaway now guys i'm working as fast as i can there's no time schedule for completion date but i will assure you a few things that number one i'll do it the funniest way i can <laughs> in the shortest time possible apologize viewers for the break in between episodes three and four and i did say on episode one that i would uh, run a weekly now due to circumstances beyond my control not realizing that this channel can't be done on a weekly process i've realized i've needed to get a couple episodes in front just so i can keep that up Oh, maybe one day when I get a full you know, scene behind me, that might be another thing. Until then, this is how we're rolling, see yeah, how it goes. <laughs> so, as I've said through the previous episodes, we're definitely on the fly here, we're just winging it. Oh, mate, I'll learn. And I'll just keep on going the best I can. So, viewers, everyone's talking about the big fight coming. So, I just thought I'd share. Now, the first thing about this, what gloves are they wearing? Oh, I don't know. All right, but just what I've heard. Now there's a lot of clickbait out there. Fight against Mike and Jake. I've got to say, to start here from a clickbait channel, stated that 60 year olds are over. Obviously referring to Mike Tyson. Well, let me assure you viewers, I'm a 60 year old. I ain't going out without a fight yet. If I can add my thoughts on the most talked about fight at the moment, my call would be this. In the first round, I would be very concerned, Jake's well-being. But by some miracle, if there's a second round, I would be very concerned for Jake's welfare. Now viewers, I've watched Mike Tyson for his whole career. And let's start with Mike Tyson outside the ring. He is a street-style gentleman, which is very rare attribute on its own. Especially for the younger viewers, now Muhammad Ali, he would be the best fighter in history. But Mike Tyson, would, no doubt, would be the most dangerous fighter in all of boxing history. So, if there's a third round, Jake may have a chance at this point. And if there's actually a tenth round, well, maybe now Mike could be in a bit of strife here. Because if he hasn't put him away, by now, he ain't. And Mike, Mike needed to knock him out in the first round. And if it goes to points, I'd, I'd call that probably Tyson would be in front uh, just because of his you know, skills as a boxer and not taking nothing away from Jake. He's, mate, look, to even take that bloke on, you've either got to be very foolish or very brave and or both. Okay, to sum up this fight, coming from a 60-year-old YouTuber, it's like being at Woodstock, man. I have seen both of these fighters Okay, I've watched a lot of fight on how Jake fights. I think that summed it up. Just saying. I have not been to Woodstock. I'm not that young. Oh, I'm at Woodstock, man. Eight to sixteen dollar bracket. I'd like to share this between each one. Well, you might think eight to sixteen dollars is nothing, but if you're a married man in Africa with your two children, you're pedaling your bike 25 kilometers to the market to get your bananas that are piled high as four times higher, and then you pedal another 25 kilometers. So around fifteen dollars a day. Now that's bargaining, isn't it? Look out, seen an alien. And before show the next blog, I'd have to put out 
that there was no animals harmed in any way, as Mr. B observed. A little bit of work, the horns are broken. Uh, We'll let that dry and we'll turn her over, give her a spray. And the horn is really soaking up the paint. We'll just give it that gloss. Okay, so there you go. I reckon it was horn, man. Did the patina look a bit, you know, because like, the patina looks the uh, in thing. Does it pass Mr. Big? You think we'll get more than 16 bucks for it? Right now, I've got to go down and buy some clear. Get your nose out of there, you'll have, oh, you've already got a buck nose. And I think it's fair to say, very affordable item for the first shop. To give you an idea, touch over one metre. Yeah, they're pretty big. Well, I'm being a billy goat, so I might as well go on with it. I've got another uh, genuine goat skull. I've done this a couple of years ago. Yeah, she's a real one. We'll just touch her up and we'll put this one in the shop too, I reckon. Car products, you can use them for everything, guys. Eh? So cool. All right. Looking good, eh? Our viewers, this one comes in at about 35 mil. Our first couple of products for the shop, I think they've hit the different category. In today's business tip, real profit is in the buying, not the selling. Now viewers, I'd like to show you an actual one billion dollars. Upon module 30, we'll start the giveaway. And if you want to be a part of that pile there, I would suggest subscribing if you haven't already. Roger, we'll go. Mr. Big just put it to me that we're doing a goat episode tonight, so maybe there's a new beer in Australia called Goat. And Mr. Big thought that we should give it a plug and see how it goes. Now the old goat is known to be all around Australia already, so it must be a good drop. Now viewers, I am a man that might have had a beer or two in his day. So what we might do, we'll go out and give it the real test. So viewers, which we're around here, we give it the thumbs up, mate. Good on you, goat. <laughs> enjoyable. Very enjoyable. So anyway, viewers, this is how we drink beer in Australia. For those who are not Australian. And those that are from Australia would strongly agree that this is the method. Three ways we do it in Australia. First, it's called the skull. The skull, viewers. Quite enjoyable. Oh God. Uh, uh. Uh, pardon the bird. Now the next level of yours, number two, is called the guzzle. Now the guzzle is very popular in Australia also. 
the guzzle goes like this. Also, quite enjoyable. For the mild drinkers in Australia, we do have a few of them, sadly. But this one's called the Sip. And the Sip goes like this. Well, it'd be enjoyable for a sipper. Me, I'm a guzzler, sometimes a scholar. So, to give the goats up, quite enjoyable. Cheers, Villas. <sighs> quite enjoyable. <laughs> Just recently, what kind of guy I am? Well, Villas, I'll give you a little insight. I am a 100% Sigma male. And no, not that kind of Sigma. I have a Zen soul that is generated through Buddhism and Stoism beliefs. My bloodline is pirates and Vikings. <laughs> yeah, I know. With a with a sprinkle of Liverpool, Australia on top, that should guarantee us the wildest ride in YouTube history. <laughs> to give you an example of this, most people starting a YouTube channel try to shock, clickbait the you know, professional um, fouls you can do, right? Well, to be honest, I'm trying to break it down, man. I'm trying to G this stuff, you know? Mate, it's very hard work when you've got a, you know, an RD lifestyle trying to keep keep it G. And the first giveaway is based on the first 10,000 subscribers. Now, guys, I think there's a few more positions available to, for you to be in the first 10,000 subscribers. I will take advantage of this moment because I don't think anywhere in history you have the availability to, to join a giveaway that only 10,000 people can be eligible for, for $32 wow. million. Dollars. That's, like, that's fantastic. I'm looking for a castle, bigger the better, in Germany, preferably, preferably with a moat. And if you know anywhere, please drop a line. And if you're asking why would I want to buy a castle, Look into the future episodes. And now, my favourite part, the totals. Alright, Gigalate is on. This week, with our $8 to $6.30, I spent $4 on a tin of car products. <laughs> I spent $4 on a tin of clear. We created the horns. I know. Raging Horns. I put them on the shop to open up the shop. Next week is our 16 to 32. I'll add a few more different items to the shop list. That ends the business side of things. And Mark's philosophy today, if you think you're beating, you already are. A man that well, absolutely inspires me as a philanthropist would have to be Reverend Bill Cruz is the top weight of Sydney. He just does so much for people. He, well, maybe a million, maybe over, but, but it'd be definitely thousands and thousands upon people that he's helped over the years. And ongoing, not just go down and have a feed. Lots of facilities that Exodus, one of his own uh, facilities alone, you know, uh, Matthew Talbot, just so many more. My hero for philanthropy in Sydney has to go to today, well, really there's two, you know, Reverend Bill Cruz and Father Chris Barolli would have to be, you know, uh, the godsend, if I can say that, to the unfortunate people of Sydney. One of my many hats go off to them men. Through this series, they will have the support of this channel 100%. And 
if you find your time, you know, they always need people to serve food, they always need volunteers, both organisations. And, and there's many organisations in Sydney that help too. You know, it's not just them two guys, there's, you know, there's a lot of good people out there. I would like to thank all of you kind people that put your time in, the volunteers. You truly are the backbone of, of Sydney when it comes to support for the people. And I thank you so much. And for those who have not had the pleasure of knowing Father Chris Riley, I would like to say that this man is uh, one of the most unique individuals in philanthropy in Sydney. His focus is uh, the youth, youth of streets, has been supporting the youth of Sydney there. I have had the, the pleasure of meeting Father Chris Riley many years ago. We were doing a a promotion, a little duck might pop up here. The philanthropy back then was giving the youth of Sydney homeless shirts, etc., with our label. So if you were one of the youth of the kids back then, you would certainly remember that brand. And how that actually ever came about was many years ago, there was a show on television called This Is Your Life on the Sunday night. And on the Monday morning, I was at my accountant's office. Next thing, we're in a truck, heading down to see Father Island, and then the children's hospital. Yeah. So yeah, Flamby has been around in my life for a couple of years. So it could be fair to say, understanding Lance, Reverend Bill, and Father Riley, you could certainly get a cup of coffee blankets, food, clothing, fish if you're, and if you're a youth as well, through Father Riley. So, for underlying issues, um, you know, alcohol, drugs, domestic violence, the main three. I suppose our next step is to get a roof over our head. Okay, and at such an early date, through the earlier stages of these episodes, and I think it'll be hard to beat this call out. My call out goes to all the volunteers that put all their own time into helping others. And to you, the people who are volunteers in any way, firemen, whatever it is, football, whatever it is, your cause is, thank you so, so much from everyone in this channel. As we come to another close of another episode, I'd like to say, I'm a bit horny in this show. All right, Raider <laughs> Joe. Thank you all for watching. And before signing off tonight, I'd like to thank you all for your support through my journey. The supporters, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for your help. Family, my friends, and of course, to all of you, the viewers that watch each episode weekly. Thank you so much. Because without you and your support, the channel would be over already. All enough. And I'm looking forward for future episodes where we turn one humble dollar into a billion dollar giveaway using 30 modules. One step at a time. Good night again all. See you all next week for the craziest ride in YouTube history.